I've seen worse wheels for a lot more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> From big brands. Recently, I had these carbon Windspace Hyper wheels completely checked out and surfaced by a professional wheel builder. We're gonna go over the general build quality and the quality of the parts of these wheels and the longevity. So looking at the wear and tear and also the serviceability after years of using them. And last but not least, we're gonna answer the question, are these wheels worth your money? What's up guys, what's up cycling fanatics? Many of you guys have been waiting on my Windspace Hyper wheel review and I'm working on that and this is the first part of it. I took these wheels to a high-end wheel builder. His name is Mark, he's got a company that's called Wheel Tech and they did a thorough inspection of these wheels looking at the overall quality of the components, the quality of the build and also the wear and tear on the inside. Now Mark has a very particular vision on how wheels should be built and that makes him very picky on the smallest things and on wheels that are out of the ordinary like these wheels with the carbon spokes for example. I told Mark that he could say anything he wanted and not to hold back just because of the video. And this was easy for him because he doesn't have any relation with Windspace or myself. This was great because I was really looking for an honest review and an honest opinion on these Windspace wheels. I made some chapters in this video, so if you want to skip to a certain part or revisit it, you can do so by clicking on the timeline. Also, I have a 10% discount code, so if you end up wanting to buy anything from Windspace, their wheels, the frame, or the handlebars, use the code and you get 10% off anything on their website. Now sit down, take your time to watch this video because this is basically a masterclass in wheel building and surfacing by a professional. Enjoy. Well, I've never seen these wheels before, but I've definitely seen the spokes and the rims, so we know where they're manufactured yeah. and how they are manufactured. And uh, well, from all the carbon spokes, uh, I think this is the uh, most solid one. The carbon spokes definitely needs to be, uh, well, a, a wheel set that's made for it. So these rims, you cannot, you cannot use them without the spokes. These hubs, you cannot use without the spokes. Yeah. These spokes, you cannot use with any other rim or hub. hub. For the rim, we checked uh, the roundness, trueness, and if the, the, the wheel is dished, so it's, it's in the middle of, of your hub, no major concerns there. It's 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 straight. It's within like two and a half tenth of a millimeter, which is actually already over the spec of a lot of uh, of fabricated wheels. So that's good. It, it also, you've been riding them for two years. Yeah. This is not a a wheel set that's brand new out of the box. So yeah, definitely it was easy to to. Pretty easy to true it. It takes some specialized tools. You have to take off the rim tape and, and you have to know how this, this particular spoke nipple works. I wouldn't trust it immediately to your local bike shop, but uh, a good wheel specialist can definitely uh, work with this, uh, with this wheel. The dishing was not 100%. I, I would rather see it that it would be dished a bit more to the, well, the drive side on the rear or the, the brake yes. interface side, uh, so it's front left. Because when the, when the tire is mounted, it's, it tends to compress the wheel a little bit and then the dishing will go over to the other side. So you like to compensate that a little bit, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem and you have to always look at it in your bike. Yeah. Because the wheel can be as, as dished and true as it is, but if you look at the standard of, of, of bike forks and bike frames, uh, that can already give a little offset. But that's easily done. Also with these wheels, you can quite easily redish them according to what's needed for your bike. Can you say something about the spoke tension? That seems to be even. Uh, and that's only te sound tested. So basically what you do is that you, 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 pick, you pick the spokes so you can, and, and you can already feel there's a, there's a good amount of tension. Uh, the only thing you don't want is too, uh, too low of a tension. Too high of a tension also not good. But these spokes we have to calibrate with our spoke tension meter. 
cannot tell if, if this is too high or too low. On the other end, if it would have been too high or too low, you would expect certain problems in the wheels. They're not evident, so that's a good indication that the spoke tension is overall is okay. okay. And, and you didn't get any untrueness or uh, any other problems with this wheel, so I think that shouldn't be any, any concern at all. What we saw is that the, the spokes are turning. Some of them were kind of twisted. Does this has it have a reason? Uh, can we can you uh, fix it? Uh, is it a big problem? Yeah, yeah, you can fix it, but but uh, you should always ask yourself the question: Why did it happen in the first place? And there's no reason for it not to come back now. We put them straight again. Uh, normally, you would expect this with a heavy side load and too low of a spoke tension that they can they come very low in their tension and they can turn or if they were built with some pre-tension already and the torsion, and then during riding it will come out and yeah. they will start to turn. So for now, I would definitely say, well, just let's just have a look if it, if it comes back. What did happen, uh, that one of, the one of the spokes, it failed partially. It's not, it no. didn't break completely, but it is no. damaged now, huh? Yeah, so but, it, but, it's, but it's a, a pretty big portion of the spoke and this uh, for safety reason definitely needs to, to, be to come out. If they break, they break. They don't bend. No. Steel spoke will bend. If something happens with these spokes, it's, uh, I think they're very strong. But if, if something happens, they will, they will break, they will never bend. If this spoke would break, would the wheel uh, be... Uh, it's you not have like a, the whole wheel is going to collapse. You will have a challenge, yeah. Because that's also because this is, uh, this is a 21 spoke wheel, but yeah. actually it's not. Because these spoke pairs function as, as, as one. The, the configuration of okay. the spokes, it's a, it's a triplet. So it means you've got two spokes on one side, one spoke on the other side. Two spokes, one. But these function as one. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, you cannot really see this as a double spoke. So the, the span between two spokes is really long. What makes it less easy to true. And this is why you also need a, a heavier rim to accommodate for this spoke pattern. So basically, if you take one spoke out, it will go to one side. Yeah. With, on a rim brake bike, it will push. slam against your, your brake pads and it will be very wobbly as hell and but probably I'm... may start to touch your chain stays. Or... It's a filament wound uh, rim, so this is not a traditional rim in the sense that how, how it's made. This is like filament wound, so it's made from, from yeah, like carbon strips that are wound uh, around, uh, uh, normally around a core, or it can even be done coreless. You can feel it, it's, it's, it's not even, but it's a, a sturdy rim, they're very strong. Downside of filament wound is they cannot really make differences in the layers on certain places of, of the, the rim. rim. So yeah. 3D yeah. printed or uh, uh, in mold spoke holes, uh, uh, extra thin around here uh, because it does feel quite thin if I uh, press here you can actually yeah, it's feel strong it. but it's it's heavy yeah. it's not this is not a light rim uh, if you look at the total weight of the wheel, wheel set and considering these are carbon spokes then this rim is is should be around uh, 480 or 500 marks what follows is a discussion about the weight distribution of the wheels in general the stability and acceleration characteristics are highly influenced by this. I'd like to quickly explain the moment of inertia, which is the resistance faced in rotating a body about its axis. It depends on the mass distribution in the body, in this case a bicycle wheel. The more of the total weight is located further away from the hub, the more resistance it gives against acceleration and deceleration, but also the more stable the wheel is when it's rotating. This is made visible with the display in Mark's shop. Now back to the hypers. Because it's a very light wheel set, but the... The weight the distribution is off. <laughs> you, you rather see a very light rim and you can whack in a very heavy uh, hub. Spokes, of course, like 
half of it is like in the center of the wheel, the other half is in the outside. Yeah. So the, the weight gain over CX ray spoke is not that, that much. It's there, always counts, but it only counts as half yeah. for a spoke. On rim weight, already uh, between 30 and 40 grams, you can feel the difference easily in your race yeah. bike. But what is, uh, is there a downside to lighter rims? Because we can go super light on the rims, but there's gonna be a downside, I guess. It's like driving a race car. Do you always want to drive a race car? If you drive, drive from here to Paris on the, on the highway, do you want, uh, want something that always wants to, to go? A race car wants to be driven on a circuit. Yeah. Downside, it's more nervous. The upside, it's, it's more nervous. Yeah. So you can really yeah. So these are race it. maybe more on the stable side, but less on the twitchy yes. side and acceleration side. And yes, but you have to work harder if they react at all on wind. Yeah. The, the, the stability of a heavier rim also makes it harder to to, to move put, to move it back so actually i did a, i do think these are these are pretty stable in crosswind so maybe that's one of the reasons yeah, it's, it's what was it is it 45 uh 50 50 because millimeters? we talked about the gyroscopic effect right of, yeah. of heavy rims so if i go fast and there's a crosswind then these wheels feel really stable because yeah, of the, the more, more the heavier more, rim yep yeah, the, the heavier rim will make it more stable uh, and that's the downside if you go fast, but you still want to steer your bike yeah. fast in a descent. Descent, you want light rims. Okay. Always. Wow. Interesting. Um, can you say something about uh, the stiffness, like radial, axial, or lateral stiffness, if there's anything to say about that? Hard to say. It's, it's, it's we didn't stiff test enough. it specifically. No, we didn't uh, test it specifically. Uh, what we've seen before from the filament wound rims, there's no significant difference from the traditionally made rims. It's more the amount of spokes and spoke pattern and the bracing angle. Then I, I don't think it will be out of the ordinary from on one side or another side. Wheels are not stiff. You, you expect to see deformation around the spoke holes. Okay. With less quality rims, you can also already see that they, they get deformed because of the, the spoke tension. You don't see that here at all. It's a strong rim. What we didn't discuss uh, uh, about the rim is actually the internal and the external width. You, you measured it. It seems yeah. to be very... Um, it's consistent. Consistent. Yeah. But still relatively uh, narrow. narrow. 19 millimeters uh, internal width is it's rapidly vanishing. 21 internal is minimum at the moment. Yeah. And for 28 millimeter, you, you definitely want uh, 21 internal. When you mount uh, 28 here, it will become very bulbous and you have to put way too much pressure in this tire to function, which causes the tire not to function. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You want to keep your tire pressure moderate Lower. to low. That's also why I was using the 25 millimeters on yeah. my uh, races because this rim, what they say, is optimized for 25. So, uh, well, I would say 23 to 25. Yeah, rim tape is is good quality. We use exactly the same. Yeah, and uh, the width was right. Uh, the valve hole was made properly, without any rips or whatever. So. The the downside of this spoke nipple uh, is that you need two tools to work with it. With a bladed spoke, you always need two tools, actually. But one tool needs to go through the, uh, through the spoke hole on the rim side. And so every time you through it, is, uh, you need to take off the, the rim tape. On the other end, they stay true for two years with it. So not it's a, no not issue, a, right? Not a really big deal. After two years, taking taking the taking the rim tape off and replacing it is is sensible thing to do anyway. Yeah. You know, you want to have a look in, inside because you want to know if your if spoke nipples are corroding or. Did you see any is, corrosion, or did you feel no. any corrosion? No. How was it to work on the oh, on easy. the on the wheel? The spoke nipples ne uh, didn't seize, so you can still read through your wheel. Uh, I don't see any signs of, of corrosion or uh, on the outside of, of the spoke nipple. 
which is a good indication that you don't clean your bike too much <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and uh, they haven't been uh, touched by too much salt or brine or I have not ridden these in the winter through the salty roads and stuff yeah. and uh, so we talked about the, the the rim and the spokes can you say something about the hubs and the bearings and and the the internal oh, in system. good shape hubs are in good shape it, because this is a very specific hub to the spokes and the wheels. yeah the only special thing actually about the hub is that it's made to uh, to be used with this this particular uh, rim and uh, spoke configuration. It's a triplet, so you cannot uh, use it on any other spoke or, or rim. The, the basic idea of this uh, hub is, is there. There's no side play. It also doesn't seize itself when you put it in. There's a nice pocket on the end cap that collects uh, dirt, and, uh... dirt and, and so it prevents your hub to dirt up. There wasn't any dirt inside. We That's a good indication that, that your seal is actually working. Huh? And uh, so the front hub, no, no issues, uh, no issues there. No side play, no uh, radial play at all. Hij loopt zuiver, maar hij loopt niet, hij loopt niet super licht. Maar lager weerstand op, een, op navlagers. Ja, dat is bijna verwaarloosd. Ja. Ja, is... Ik vind dat hij voor een na van twee jaar loopt hij gewoon netjes. En uh, nu is het, zou het zaak zijn om, ze, om even leeg te tikken. Zieltjes eraf wippen, schone spoelen en, uh, en wat nieuwe vettering waar nou. Hoef je niet eens de lage zelf te vervangen? Nee, waarom? Nee, ja, weet ik niet. Hm? Kun je ook gewoon onderhouden. Ja. Ja. Ja, ze worden vaak weggemikt, maar dat, vind ik, ja. dat is zonde, dat is nergens voor nodig. If they are uh, uh, ceramic bearings, you would expect them to be more smooth. But they're in good shape, so but yeah. nothing special there. Is that a bearing thing or is that maybe after the usage? It can be the bearing, but it can also be the construction of the hub. If, 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 if the hub is not good, the bearings will cannot perform okay. at all. So you can have a very good bearing if it's in a bad hub, a badly constructed hub, they will still get eaten and, and wear out prematurely. We call them bearing eaters. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After the external inspection, Mark took the rear hub apart to have a look at the wear and tear on the inside. Before we go any further, I'd like to mention that this red colored hub body is an earlier model of the Hyper wheels. If you've recently bought these wheels, yours is probably black because that's the new improved one. All of the current wheels that are sold have this new hub design. I don't know at the exact differences yet, but I've been told by Winspace that the issues that we found in the hub are already addressed and improved in the current hub design. I purposely did not clean the internal of the hub to show how they look from the inside after using them for about 7,000 kilometers. I've only cleaned them once before my hot root race. So it's a six ball system that works in pairs that alternately engage with the hub, effectively doubling the engagement points onto the hub. Mark started to explain how the hub worked and where the metal colored grease was coming from. The paws of the free hub are moving inside the sockets and cause friction and wear in the body. This will then induce a bit of play in the paws, which allows them to move slightly out of plane. There was a wearing pattern visible on the paws. And also there was a thin plastic spacer in between the body and the hub to keep the paws in place. And it was quite worn out and it was broken, but it still did its job. Front has no issues at all. Rear, we saw a few small issues. They could have used the maintenance uh, a little bit earlier. Are the, they the, easy to service? Mm, yeah, there's, there's nothing out of the ordinary. It's a typical pole and, uh, and spring uh, free, free hub. But you can already see that the, the rubber uh, dried out and failed. Uh, not a little, uh, was it shim? Uh, broke, uh, so that it's causing some issues and it There's is wearing itself out yeah. at the moment. So this this you needs notice a, some metal. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's 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 definitely metal scraping. So the 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 grease you get out has a metally color, 
and that comes from the aluminium from the from the sockets of the of the poles. Is it too late for this to save? What what should no, we no, do no. to, it to need, fix it? But it needs some okay. service parts, and and these are are not readily available. So if 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 you if you consider a set of wheels like this, you should always get some of the small uh, smaller stuff like seals, because this is a 15 minute job but now we have to wait until parts are in yeah yeah it's not really we available. can't fix it because no i cannot fix it and now your shop is filled with with a lot of different oh, parts to the brim. but not for this not <laughs> no. for this specific no, no, no. Uh, no, wheel no, set no. so because they do get delivered with spare uh, spokes which yeah. i forgot to bring because if i did we could have yeah we could have uh, repaired it but uh, the internals of the hub i'm going to check if these are uh, replaceable and if they can deliver uh, spare parts yeah which is a very good point if you buy well, a yeah a, a lot of times you see that they, they can provide you a new complete free hub yeah but that will set you back uh, like maybe a 60 dollars 60 euros while this is a uh, for parts Six euros, yeah, and we would be back in business. We we're back in business, okay. And there's no need to to throw this uh, this shell away or even the springs and the poles. We could replace them, but that's that's a, maybe a 10, 15 euro extra. What about uh, the the markings on the shell from the cassette? Is that a th something to worry about? Is uh, this normal? No, that's uh, completely normal. We have a steel uh, cassette, and we have a light aluminium cassette body so that will always leave markings and the only thing you need to do is take a take a file and just take off the the chamfer off this material at the point where it's where it's caving in it will become stronger so at a certain point your cassette will not go further than ah, that very yeah. interesting thing uh, that you noticed and that we discussed is the entry angles of the spokes yeah as well on the rim side as on the bear on the hip side could you tell something about that briefly and if you're uh, predicting any issues with this wheel in the future a thing you you should really consider with carbon spokes is that you can't cold form a carbon spoke as you would do with a steel spoke so your entry angle from the rim towards the hub needs to be 100 percent same goes here but it's, it's interesting that this entry angle is a bit off. And that is because I think in the, the CAD, they uh, didn't consider the, the bend you get in your spoke when you undercross them. Is this a problem? Well, apparently not, because these wheels have been ridden continuously for two years yeah. with, with quite some mileage on it. So and I don't see any problems and, and, and carbon is able to bend and do without getting uh, metal fatigue so it's very important with carbon spokes that the entry angles oh yeah they should definitely know what they're doing yeah yeah, yeah. Have, do you see a lot of carbon spokes nowadays yeah. do people come into your shop with wheels with carbon spokes no 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 not at all okay very important question that's going to be the last one the price of these wheels is twelve hundred dollars or 1,050 euros with the current exchange rate. Is it worth it? I've seen, I've seen worse wheels for a lot more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> From big brands. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because yeah. Yeah. in general, uh, people are still, and as well, myself as well, have an idea like, well, Chinese might not be very good. Uh, Made quality. in China can mean anything. There's the greatest rims ever come from China. The worst rims ever come from China. Same goes for aluminium. Best aluminium comes from, from Taiwan, basically. Uh, the worst aluminium rims also come from that direction. And even uh, a bad wheel builder out of these good components will still make a bad wheel. You know, a bad wheel builder will make bad wheels out of good products. So overall, it's put together sensibly. They've been giving it thought. Does it come with downsides? Yes, of course, it, it does. Everything does. But is, is it worth the money? Yeah, I think so. All right. Would I buy it? No. 
<laughs> you no. don't have to put that in. <laughs> you no. will build your own wheels. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. But it's interesting. Yeah. It's, it's interesting technique. Also consider like, okay, but what's the downside of it? Does it provide a solution to a problem? Uh, that doesn't always have to be. You know, it can also be a very nice new technique or, or yeah. whatever. Uh, or, or a little bit better. Or, or a, a optimization. Yeah, it's yeah. all about optimization. Yeah. This, this is not overpriced. So with the, the feedback I got from Mark, I got, went back to Winspace. And Joe, my contact at Winspace, he was very open to hear any, everything I had to say about the wheels. And he could inform me straight away that the, the hips of these wheels are actually already redesigned. So I have an earlier model of this wheel set, visible with this red cassette body. So if you already have these wheels, a very big chance that you already have the new model. And if you buy it now, then for sure, it's gonna be the newer and improved hub and cassette body. I will get a, a newer wheel set from them in the future and then I can uh, compare it side by side. But for now, I'll put some images right here so you can see the difference between the new and the old one. I would like to thank Mark and the guys at Wheeltech for their assessment of these wheels, for this wheel review. It's a great shop that can be trusted with your gear. I'll go back to them to fix and service this wheel set after the small parts from Winspace get in. In general, I'm really happy with the verdict of Mark. Looking at the components and the way it's built, we can say that it's worth your money. They retail for $1,200, and if you use my discount code, it's around 1,050 bucks or 950 euros. So that's actually a really good deal for wheels like this. In my next video, I'm gonna continue to talk about these wheels, how I've been using them over the last two years, and what I think of their actual riding characteristics out on the road on the real world. Please give me a thumbs up for this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell notification so you don't miss another video in the future. Guys, thanks for watching. I'm gonna see you next time. See ya.